Hello, my name is Krista Clark, and it was a real pleasure to be part of the curatorial advisory team for Migrating Objects. I'm an independent curator and art historian based in the Boston area, and a specialist in historic and contemporary arts of Africa. My contribution to the exhibition focused on works from Africa that Guggenheim acquired, which represent the majority of her non-Western art collection. Nearly all of these works were created during the first half of the 20th century, making them roughly contemporaneous with her Western modern art. But while the names of those artists are well known and celebrated, artists like Pablo Picasso, Max Ernst, Alexander Calder, and of course, Jackson Pollock, we don't know the names of the artists for any of the works from Africa in Guggenheim's collection. Unfortunately, this is often the case with collections of African art, and there are varied reasons for that. Traditionally, artists rarely sign their work, though their names were frequently commemorated through oral histories. In the case of some ritual objects, the names of artists were obscured since the works were believed to come from the spiritual realm. In many instances, when makers were known, those who brought the objects to Europe and to the United States neglected or made a conscious choice not to register their names. In the exhibition, we use the designation unrecorded artist to draw attention to this aspect of their history. Our intent is to acknowledge the fact that individual artists created these works, even if these identities are now lost due to a tortuous history. But one of the works in the exhibition, this truly fantastic headdress, has been newly attributed to a workshop of sculptors in southwestern Nigeria. Thanks to the Yoruba specialist, Henry Jewell, who kindly shared his great expertise with me, we learned that this work was made by an artist in the Adubaloge workshop, a family-based atelier in the Yoruba city of Abiyakuta. Since at least the 19th century, Adubaloge sculptors created objects that served the ritual and prestige needs of local patrons. They specialized in making agungun headdresses, which are worn and masquerade performances that honor the ancestors and the newly deceased. Such headdresses would be worn by men whose identities were concealed by full-body cloth costumes and danced theatrically for a community audience. This work combines various themes. The central figure depicts a female priestess. The distinctive necklace she wears is an emblem of her position, as is the staff she holds in her right hand. She wears a man's cap and holds a man on her lap. This alludes to the harmonious balance of male and female forces that the Yoruba believed necessary for leadership, including spiritual leadership. Is she perhaps a priestess of Shango, the powerful god of thunder? At the back, there is a Shango dance wand in the shape of a double-headed axe and images of sacrificial offerings, such as dried fish and pangolin. The face of the headdress is pigmented blue, a color associated with calm, which is necessary to balance Shango's fiery temper. Much of the interpretation of this work, however, remains a mystery. The Agungun headdress in Guggenheim's collection was probably made in the mid 20th century by a skilled specialist responding to market forces. By the first decades of the 20th century, the Adobologe workshop had expanded their clientele. When a locally commissioned sculpture was deemed unacceptable by the patron on artistic, technical, or even spiritual grounds, they often sold it to tourists and expatriates. By mid-century, the atelier had shifted almost entirely to commodity carving for external markets, a transitional period of artistic production during which this work was made. Once works of our African art reached the West, they took on new and involuntary lives as repository of fantasies or simply as interior decor. In one of my favorite photos of Peggy Guggenheim, she stands next to the Agungun headdress, wearing her iconic butterfly sunglasses. She's studying the work with an expression that I read as a combination of bemusement and astonishment. It's possible that she's puzzling over its imagery, or maybe she's reflecting on its journey from Abiyakuta, Nigeria to Venice, Italy. But to me, it's much more likely that she's thinking about which room to move it to next and what modern painting to place it next to 
in the freewheeling combination of cultures that was her palazzo in Venice.